Morning, Jaguar fans. It's another Victory Monday, something that we kind of should be getting used to hearing this time of the year, which is a strange thing to say, considering that the Jaguars secured their fourth win yesterday over the Colts by shutting them out 27 to zero. It's already more wins than we had the entire 2016 season. And that's saying a lot because we're not even at the halfway point of the 2017 season. The defense is looking like a showstopper, one of the best. I've already heard it being compared to the 85 Bears lead the league in sacks and lead the league in point differential. And it got me to wondering if Jaguar fans owe Dave Caldwell an apology including myself. Now, I was one of those people that in the offseason, I heavily criticized retaining Dave Caldwell. I thought he should have been kicked out the door with Gus Bradley, worst NFL head coach of all time. And I thought this franchise needed to have sort of a clean slate with Tom Coughlin coming in in the offseason and taking over that, you know, sort of executive of, of football operations move. And I criticized Dave Caldwell to the point where I was asking for – for, for him to be fired in the offseason, fire him in the middle of the season, fire him at the beginning of the season. I've asked for him to be fired numerous times. But after the performance of this team so far and going back and looking at some of his past draft picks that looked like they were going to be busts and looking at some of his free agent pickups, I think it's time that we start to give Dave Caldwell credit where credit is due. Now, I'm going to run through this list of players that I mean, obviously Blake Bortles is the quarterback position. It's it's the most important position on the field, and he's missed on that. Despite the Jaguars' surprisingly good season, Blake Bortles is not the quarterback of the future. But it, that can be addressed in the offseason. There was another bad pickup too with Luke Jokel, offensive tackle that was brought in. I think it was uh, it might have been Dave Caldwell's first. I think it was his second draft, first overall draft pick, or not first overall, but you get what I'm saying. So Bortles and Jokel are obviously the bad picks at the top. But if you run through in the entire 2000 draft class we, we I think the entire league as a whole doesn't want to talk about the 2013 draft class because it was just a disaster but Dave Caldwell's picks since then Jalen Ramsey Leonard Fournette Dante Fowler Miles Jack Telvin Smith Yannick Ngakwe Cam Robinson they're all stars in this league already and I haven't even mentioned Allen Robinson who's been hurt all of this season and won't be back this season who knows if he'll be back with the Jaguars but that's another draft pick that sort of you know should be added to, to Dave Caldwell's resume his free agent pickups that have worked out really well Malik Jackson AJ Bouye Barry Church uh, well Barry Church did say that he came here for Coughlin or he, he never had a conversation with Caldwell but I still think that you know Dave Caldwell gets a partial credit on that Jeremy Parnell right tackle on the Jaguars. He has seen a lot of improvement this year. Could be his best season that he's had in an NFL uniform so far during his career. Now, looking at all of those picks, how they're panning out, it looks like, a, I mean, this is a showstopper of a defense, the number one defense in the league. And we should have, I'm starting to think that maybe Jaguar fans were way too harsh on Dave Caldwell, because if you look back at the beginning of how this sort of franchise was reshaped, after the Weavers sold the team to Khan, you had Shot Khan, a brand new rookie owner. You had Dave Caldwell, brand new rookie GM. You had Gus Bradley, brand new rookie coach. And then you had Blake Bortles, a brand new rookie quarterback. So when you have that much newness to a franchise, I think that there's a lot to be said that you lacked experience and it showed and it permeated throughout the organization and it permeated to the play on the field. And so getting rid of Gus Bradley was a big step in the right direction. But now that Dave Caldwell has had a few years under his belt to sort of get used to his new job duties now that Tom Coughlin has taken over more of a role, Dave, it's allowed Dave Caldwell to really focus on his true art, and that is the scouting position. I pulled this from the Jaguars website, and it said that previously with the Carolina Panthers and the Indianapolis Colts, Caldwell has been with teams that went to the playoffs in 13 of his 17 seasons in Carolina, Indianapolis, and Atlanta. So he's basically been a part of the playoffs or it had a hand in getting his teams to the playoffs every single year before he joined the Jaguars. But now that he's with the Jaguars, and, and obviously we know the history of this franchise over the past few years, but this season has really been a chance. I think that 
it, it, you've seen what has happened now that you have a true leader at the head coaching position. You have true leadership at the top of the football operations. And it allows Dave Caldwell to focus on his true strength. And it really is amazing whenever you see a coach that is fitting his players to their, their, their strengths in the scheme wise of how this team is playing week in and week out there's still a lot of questions on the offensive side of the ball Leonard Fournette is obviously the the, the heart the heart and soul of the offense and it runs through them literally and figuratively but I think that this is a, an opportunity that you know Dave Caldwell has shown enough and I think that we as a fan base were too quick to go after him and call for his head and want to be fired, as most fan bases are. They they get a little emotional. They get a little uh, they they overreact a little bit, and I'm certainly guilty of that. But I think that this is you know for throughout the first few games of this season, throughout the first seven games of this season, Dave Caldwell's draft picks and his free agency picks are looking like home runs every swing every time they step up to the plate and it's really really a strange position to be in as a Jaguars fan to actually look look at the playoffs and think we can say playoffs with confidence now and it's it's a very strange feeling to be in but it's also something that I certainly I, I am I'm am willing to eat my words on wanting to have Dave Caldwell kicked out the door and I know that, yes, he's still missed on the most important position on the field, and that's the quarterback position. But I think that we, that Jaguar fans now owe Dave Caldwell an apology. And I think that he should get a chance at addressing that position in this next offseason by either throwing a stack at Kirk Cousins, who is my ideal choice, and then going back and drafting, still drafting a quarterback in the first or second round of this next year's draft. But I still think that Dave Caldwell should get a chance and get an opportunity on securing that quarterback position because if you look back at his history he had a chance and he scouted out Matt Ryan and and he's turned it he was an MVP quarterback last year he didn't play so well against the Patriots yesterday but that could that's that, that's neither here nor there Dave Caldwell has sort of proved this entire season or this is his sort of redemption season and I think that it's time that we as fans sort of give credit where credit is due and allow Dave Caldwell a pass because he's clearly his picks are really really shining this year so thank you guys for watching I'm gonna put this up on on the blog later on today and if you want to catch out more of my work just check out guysgirl.com or listen to helmets and heels on Tuesday night or the pregame show which kicks off five hours before kickoff on every single Jaguars game day and just hit the link in the bio if you want to give a little bit of subscribe and thank you guys for watching and go Jags playoff bound